First, we will label the horizontal segment of the fence as Y. And then after doing so, what we need to do is come up with what I like to call a constraint equation. When solving any optimization equation, you need to find a constraint. In this case, the farmer is constrained to have only 1,200 feet of fencing. So what this means is that if we added up all the lengths of the fence, it would have to come out to equal 1,200. So in other words, we could say that 3x plus y plus x must equal 1,200. And then of course we can simplify this constraint equation by adding the 3x and the 1x. This gives us 4x plus y is equal to 1,200. Now usually you want to solve your constraint for y, and we will see why we do that in just a moment, but we'll go ahead and solve for y right off the bat by subtracting 4x from both sides. So now we can see that y is going to equal 1,200 minus 4x. That's good, but we need a second equation, and the second equation is the objective, and that is based on whatever it is you're trying to minimize or maximize. Now we go back and look at the question, and it says to find the largest area that the farmer can enclose. So of course, we need to calculate the area. We need a formula for the area of this farm. Now the farm was trapezoidal shaped, so it might be helpful to review the equation for the area of a trapezoid. This is going to equal 1 half multiplied by the sum of the two bases and then multiplied by the height. So in this example, we have a trapezoid that kind of looks something like this. And it's a trapezoid that's kind of tipped over, if you will. So be careful here because base one is actually going to be the three X. Base two is going to be the one X. And then the height of the trapezoid is going to be the Y. If it helps, you can visualize the trapezoid as oriented more in this manner. And so you can see more clearly that the y would be the height, and then we have the 3x and the 1x. But in any event, we're going to plug in for base 1, base 2, and height using our variable labels. So for base 1, again, we're going to have 3x, base 2 is 1x, and then the height is y. We can simplify this. We add the 3x and the 1x to get 4x, and then half of 4xy is just 2xy. So this is our simplified area equation, but you will recall that we had solved for y using our constraint equation. So what we'll do is go back at this stage of the problem and we will plug in what we had solved for y, which was 1200 minus 4x. We can then distribute the 2x into the parentheses and now we have area is equal to 2400x minus 8x squared. And what's really nice about this area equation is that it's based on just a single variable and that's what you're looking for. You want your area or whatever it is you're trying to optimize to be in terms of just a single variable. Now, it might be helpful to understand the next step by visualizing a graph. Let us imagine that you have area plotted against X. And if we were to plot this, there would be some value of X. We don't know what that value is, but there's some value of X at which the area is maximized. And if you look at the tangent line, and more particularly the slope of the tangent line, also known as the derivative, the slope of that tangent line would equal zero. So that's our next move, is to calculate the derivative of our area function and then set it equal to zero. So the, ter the derivative of 2400x is 2400 minus the derivative of 8x squared. We just do a power rule, so multiply two times eight. This gives us 16x and then subtract one from the power to get a power of one. So then we'll go ahead and set this equal to zero. Let's subtract 2400 from both sides canceling it on the left side. And then we will divide both sides by negative 16. And doing so gives us a value of x. This is going to equal 150 feet. Now, we don't yet know if this actually maximizes the area. We have to do a test to ensure that the area is indeed maximized. We will choose to do the first derivative test. We will plot the 150 on a number line and then we will choose some test values. We'll choose a value less than 150 as well as greater than 150. So for example, we might choose x is equal to 149 feet and then x is equal to 151 feet. And what you do is you plug that into the derivative. Let's go ahead and rewrite the derivative. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in your test values. So for example, you would do the derivative with 149 plugged in first 
And the precise value of the derivative at x equals 149 doesn't matter. What matters is whether it comes out to be positive or negative. Now, when you plug in 149, you should get a positive value for the derivative. So in other words, the derivative a prime is going to be greater than zero for the interval that is less than 150. So you get a positive value for the derivative. This means that the area function is increasing all the way up to x is equal to 150. But then we plug in 151 next into our derivative. And in this case, the value of the derivative at x equals 151 turns out to be negative or less than zero. And since the derivative is less than zero or negative, that means the area function is decreasing along the interval for when x is greater than 150. So for this interval right here. And if you look at our little graphic here, you can see that indeed right at x equals 150, the area has been maximized. So according to the first derivative test, the area is maximum at x is equal to 150 feet. The last thing we do in optimization is just make sure we've actually answered the question. Maybe it wanted the x value, maybe it actually wanted the area. So we go all the way back to the question and the question said to find the largest area that the farmer can enclose. So we're not quite done, we just need to go back and calculate the area. And that's not going to be too bad because remember, we had an area equation right here. This is our area in terms of x. So we're going to copy that and then we're going to go down and we're going to plug the x value that we had solved for to calculate the maximum area. So here we go. We're going to calculate the area when x equals 150. So just go ahead and plug 150 into your equation. And when you compute this, you will see your area is 180,000. This is area, so it's not feet, but rather feet squared. So this would be the final answer to the question, the maximum area that the fence will enclose.